Salk Institute concentrates its work in basic biology underlying the health sciences and is an entirely freestanding institution in the private sector. A lot of times people say that what we're doing is like rocket science, but in reality it's way harder than rocket science. And that's because we don't understand some of the most basic rules by which biology works. And consequently the research that we're doing at the Salk Institute are really directed at trying to work out nature's deepest secrets and to use those to better understand how the, the body works. To answer big questions and make big discoveries, you have to have a wide view, not a narrow view. And Salk is just the right place for that. Here, there are a lot of brilliant minds, but the, the good thing here is that they span different disciplines. So you can have a lunch having a plant biologist talk about neurobiology or about cancer biology with their colleagues in these fields, and you can thus take a step back and take a different view and I think in my mind this prepares you for big discoveries because you always need to take a step back to answer the big question. A better understanding of plants will allow us to generate plants that will withstand climate change, for instance. And this is one of the big challenges that I try to understand. Innovation usually happens at the boundary of scientific disciplines when we can take methods from one area and apply it in novel ways to other areas. There are many different types of cells. The brain doesn't come with a wiring diagram. It's noisy, it's imperfect, but we can ask the question as theories of what is it trying to do? What is the ideal towards which it strives? Some of the world's deadliest killers still don't have vaccines, like tuberculosis, HIV, malaria. And what we need to understand are some of the fundamentals the basic elements of how we generate long-term immunity in order to make better vaccines. And that's what my lab is trying to do, is to understand the, the guiding principles for how long-term memory is created in our bodies so that then we can harness that information to make better vaccines. One of the things that always amazes me about science is that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and we're constantly surprised. We can predict that there will be treatments for X and Y by this date and we're usually wrong. Sometimes we're disappointed but often we're surprised by how our discoveries are going to accelerate things that we hadn't anticipated. I was drawn towards the brain because I was fascinated by philosophy when I was in college but realized that in addition to the big thoughts that philosophy provides, the rapidly advancing tools in molecular biology and in systems neuroscience are now allowing us to access the brain and ask some of the questions in an experimental way that the philosophers have been asking for centuries. Our goal is to take cancer from being a deadly, terrifying disease that is invariably terminal into being something that is actually manageable and treatable and that people can live to forget. I am constantly inspired when we make new findings in the lab that take us into new areas of biology and new therapeutic possibilities that we could have never imagined. We have to have research like this to help us uh, conquer what has been unconquerable. But I know that day will come. Thank you.